During the interview, you mentioned that you tried to follow the, the, the lives and careers of, of great mm -hmm. men. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk to us about some of the, the great men you admire, <laughs> both Nigerian and, um, and otherwise? Now, uh, let me, I'll start with the Nigerian ones because they are names of, of people that you guys know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, people that I think are... Uh, uh, and I think that sometimes in life you should... Um, you should choose your mentors carefully. But more importantly, you shouldn't you shouldn't you shouldn't have uh, role models for everything mm -hmm. uh, in terms of being one person because people tend to fail you. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, so I think it's it's more important to take a, a particular picture and say, I'd like to be like this guy, but only for this reason. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know, when I take a look at the whole, uh, uh, you know, the, the sum of the whole is less than <laughs> the parts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, no, Chris Ogumanjo. Uh, why do I think he's such a great man? Because he was one of the first people uh, that I um, uh, that I imagined uh, set up a law firm, but built it into one of the um, the greatest um, corporate law firms eh, in Nigeria. Uh, but in doing that, um, he also took advantage of the opportunities in the corporate space around him. And, and so became a major investor in the very first set of um, multinational banks that came into Nigeria, whether it was Citibank or JP Morgan or first Chicago in those days when it became uh, IMB. Um, uh, but never walked away from the law. Uh, so if you if you look back and you ask people, uh, Chief Chris Ogubanjo, what, what's he famous for? He's famous for his law firm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His law firm is what he's known for. Did he achieve around the law firm? Oh, yeah. And did he achieve significantly? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, has he maintained his his focus in terms of his uh, 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 the, his the ethical considerations? The answer is yes. Um, and so people like that, uh, 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 for me, being a lawyer, um, uh, uh, particularly interesting uh, person. Again, because I'm a lawyer, this you know. Uh, I like, uh, I don't know how many of you have worked with him or met him, Afe Babalola. Very, for, for totally different reasons. Mm. Why? Um, I think that as a lawyer, you must um, respect people who, in one lifetime, mm. in one lifetime, have a range of clients that are difficult. If all of them were pulled into one room, they'll kill each other. <laughs> so if you represent Sheo Shagari in one lifetime, uh, the Abacha family, Babangida family, Baba Sonjo, huh? in one lifetime, mm. you must be a great lawyer. Huh? Whatever the market says about you, um, it, 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 what it means is that they recognize what you bring to the table, mm -hmm. uh, and, that, and they recognize your great litigation skills. Um, and uh, Ogafe, as I call him, uh, recognizes, and, and, and he doesn't believe his own BS. Huh? So he's, uh, um, if you go into his office, um, he's there working away. He's writing books, um, you know, doing his stuff, and, and, um, and recently set up his own university. So it's not, it's not about him. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's about um, um, it's good. Yeah, developing the law and using it. Um, um, and, and, and also because... Um, when you ask him why is he setting up a university, because he was a self-taught person, huh? so he didn't go to school huh? in the formal sense mm -hmm. of going to school. Took correspondence courses huh? to 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 get to university, huh? and and those kind of people understand the value of education huh? and the value of advantage. Huh? Uh, understand the value of advantage from the perspective of what they see uh, that others get. So it, it's critical that um, we look at those kind of people. You know, I, I tend to to look at what I want to emulate as opposed to the totality. Yeah. Um, and because I, 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 I read up on all these great men, I mean, I, I, you know, I've used one example for you. One of the things that always struck me was, um, what's the name of that guy that was um, was uh, uh, president of GE before the current guy? Um, Jack Walsh. Jack Walsh, mm. thank you. Um, one of the things I enjoyed the most when I read Jack Walsh's book um, and again, just signifies to you, came from very, very lowly, very lowly mm. beginnings. Huh? But one of the things that I thought was really significant, he used to stammer as a child. 
stammered very badly, very, very badly. And um, the way he got out of it was that his mother said to him one day, she said to him, you know, because it bothered him so much. So she said to him, you know what, you are brighter than everybody around you. That's why you stammer. I said, why? So he said, you know, it's because um, your brain is working faster than your mouth. <laughs> yeah? And that if you could just slow down, yeah? you'd actually see yeah? that. And, and, and he took it to heart. Yeah? So he slowed his brain down just a little. Uh, <laughs> and, and today, when you watch him and interviews, uh, you tend to, you know, you actually would not know that this guy actually had a physical challenge uh, yeah. that he's been able to, um, you know, to deal with and mm. conquer. And, and, and I think that, you know, you look at all those kind of stories, you pick little things from people uh, in terms of what their challenges in life have, have been.